Hi everybody, happy Wednesday. Today is Wednesday, April 1st, 2020, and um, it is the very first day of April, new month, and I have no idea how many teeth we lost in March, so I, we can't finish our tooth tally chart, but we would start a new month, and it looks like the weather has changed, and it's sunny, and it is 53, so a little bit chilly, but I think it's going to warm up later in the week, so that's exciting. Um, I shared earlier in the day a mystery dug on the tradition of April Fool's Day, and so maybe you've seen it. I know that Charlotte played a little prank on her dad, and April Fool's Day pranks are not meant to hurt anybody's feelings or to make anybody sad. They're just supposed to be silly, like, hey, there's a spider on your head, April Fool's Day. Um, I know that my daughter made a big mess in my other daughter's room, so that was kind of fun. Um, so I'm going to be, Ella, say hi. Go sit down. I know, they both played a messy prank with each other. Um, so before I get started with today's book, I just want to say wonderful job to all of you who have read to us, whether it's been on our Zoom meetings or if your parents have recorded you and I've been able to share that with the class. That's been super fun so you guys can um, see each other more often. So thank you for those of you who have shared your reading with us. If any of you want to read a story and send me a video of it, I would love to have it. I don't have any more volunteers right now, um, but I have loved the ones that have shared. Um, I love hearing your voices and seeing that you're still reading. It makes my heart so excited. Um, since I have caterpillars, well, I don't have caterpillars anymore. I actually have a whole bunch of chrysalises, chrysalisi. I don't know the plural of that word. I'll Google it. No, it's fine. I'll sit down. Um, so they're all in their chrysalis right now. So they're going through the change and it will be a little while until I put them in the net. So they're okay right now. They're just going to hang out in the cup for a little bit, and then when I hang them in their net, they'll be getting ready to come out as butterflies, which led me to a nonfiction book. It's been a while since I've read to you, and all the books that I've read on these YouTube videos have been fiction stories, so I wanted to read a nonfiction story. We always talk about that the purpose of a nonfiction story, the author writes this so we can learn. These help us to learn facts about something. So the name of this is called Caterpillar to Butterfly. And obviously the author, Laura Marsh, wrote this so that we can learn about the life cycle of a butterfly. I love nonfiction books because I love the real photographs. It really helps readers to see what the book is about instead of looking at illustrations. Um, I think it's pretty interesting to see real things if I'm trying to learn more about them. So this is a riddle. What starts as an egg, then walks on many legs, and then uses wings to fly? A butterfly. Beautiful butterflies. Butterflies are fun to watch. They fly with loops and dives. Some have bright colors. Some have bold patterns, too. So pretty. Four stages. So this is another cool thing about nonfiction book is that each page has a different main idea about what the store about what they're trying to tell us. So we know that this is going to be talking about the four stages of the life cycle. It's also fun to watch butterflies change. They change a lot in their short lives. In fact, there are four stages in a butterfly's life. Egg, caterpillar, chrysalis, butterfly. Stage one, egg. A mother butterfly lays many legs eggs on a leaf or a branch. Each egg is close to the food. Caterpillar food, that is. So they know what they're doing when they lay their eggs. That way the, their baby caterpillars can wake up and eat exact, or not wake up, hatch out and eat exactly what they're meant to be eating. And so butterfly eggs come in lots of different shapes. Stage two, caterpillar. The tiny caterpillar bites a hole in the egg. It crawls out. The caterpillar is very hungry. Hmm, that makes me think of a text-to-text -text connection. We read the very hungry caterpillar, and it said the same thing. The caterpillar eats its shell, then it eats the leaf it's on. The caterpillar moves on to another leaf, and then it eats that too. Another thing to notice when reading nonfiction stories is my voice is different. I don't go up and down with the excitement and use the expression. I'm reading facts, so my voice doesn't have to have that kind of same um, up and down fluency expression. It has fluency, but I'm just reading telling sentences. 
The caterpillar grows and grows. It gets too big for its skin. It sheds its old skin like a snake. The new skin fits for a while, but then the caterpillar is too big for that skin too. Caterpillars shed their skin four or five times. Stage three, chrysalis. By now the caterpillar is ready to rest. It hangs upside down. It sheds its skin one more time. The new layer is called a chrysalis. It is a hard shell inside the caterpillar. Inside the caterpillar is changing. It, sta it stays in the chrysalis for 10 to 14 days. This is exactly what our lovey looked like when it was a monarch butterfly. It starts out looking like this. We have painted ladies in the cup and they look a little bit different. Stage four, butterfly. The chrysalis moves, it splits open. The butterfly wiggles out. The wings are wet and crumpled. Blood pumps into the butterfly's wings. They get bigger and harden. The wings dry. Now the butterfly is ready to fly. Have a good trip, butterfly. Time for lunch. A butterfly doesn't eat plants like a caterpillar. It has no mouth. The butterfly drinks nectar from flowers. It drinks juice from fruit. A tube on its head works like a straw. Slurp. Here's some cool butterfly facts. Fact number one, butterfly wings are covered in tiny scales. Number two, the world's smallest butterfly is a blue pygmy. Its length is of a pushpin from wing to wing. To wing. Fact number three, butterflies are found all over the world except in Antarctica and in the driest deserts. I guess because there's no food, that makes sense. Number four, there are about 17,000 kinds of butterflies in the world. Number five, butterflies taste with their feet. They have taste sensors there. Could you imagine if we had to stick our feet in food to taste it? That would be silly and kind of gross. Number six, the world's largest butterfly is the Queen Alexandra Birdwing. It's also, it is as long as a ruler, so that's 12 inches. That's a very big butterfly. Back off. Caterpillars and butterflies are tasty snack for predators, but they have tricks to keep predators away. Some hide using camouflage. Some can be deadly to eat. And this one here looks pretty cool. Some look like other things. To me, that looks like a snake. I wouldn't try to nibble it. Moth or butterfly. So here we're going to compare butterflies and moths. They look alike, but here's how you tell them apart. So the butterfly antenna are thin and have little knobs at the end, where the moth, they're slim and point, but they look like feathers. Um, their body, butterfly body, bodies are slender, which means thinner. And moth bodies are fat and furry. And Butterflies can be colored brightly, while usually moths are brown, tan, or white. And here's probably why. Because mostly moths fly at night, so they're probably going to be more camouflaged or be able to hidden if they're darker. And butterflies usually fly during the day. So moths are nocturnal, just like some other animals we've learned about. That's, yeah. So if you want to bring butterflies to you, here's how you do it. You can make um, a butterfly garden, but you'd have to ask for help. So here's a whole bunch of steps. I'm not going to read all that right now, but you would just pretty much want to plant flowers and keep it open. So these show some cool close-up pictures of this is an egg. This is a chrysalis. We saw Lovey's chrysalis turn clear like this when we knew he was ready to come out. Um, this one is a caterpillar. Look how chunky he is. Their wings, their antenna, and this one looks pretty cool. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, nonfiction books are pretty awesome to read. We read them for different purposes. We read them with a different voice. It's They're just different kind of books, but I love them because I love to learn about them. Um, one thing about nonfiction books is they often have these little things called like captions. And I know some of my groups have we talked about this. These captions are to let us kind of know what's going on in the picture. This tells us it's a monarch butterfly caterpillar. And this tells us that these are the stages of it forming its chrysalis. So sometimes nonfiction books have words down here that help us um, know more about what's going on in the picture, which helps us to learn more. And um, again, just they really mostly use real life photographs and it just makes it so awesome. Like here's one coming out of its empty chrysalis. So I hope you enjoyed this nonfiction book. I know you guys love them in class. And I thought this was pretty relevant to what we were doing. Sorry this video is a whole lot longer than the ones I had been doing, but 
you know, I have to teach you this right now too. So I hope you enjoyed it. I love you. I miss you. And I look forward to our Zoom meeting on Thursday, which is tomorrow. Woohoo! So don't forget that you're supposed to be writing me three good sentences that start correctly and end correctly, answering the questions. What do you like about doing school at home now? Where do you sit when you do your work now that we're not sitting at our desk? And what do you miss about school? And I will share my answers with you as well. See you tomorrow.